We begin this night with a Fox News alert. Day eight of the Kyle Rittenhouse trial is now officially in the books. Now only closing arguments remain, and then the jury, they will begin deliberation. Of course, the entire case could still be thrown out. The prosecutors have been credibly accused of misconduct, and their case is extremely weak. Wendy Rittenhouse, Kyle's mother, will join us for an exclusive interview tonight. And Greg Jarrett and Professor Alan Dershowitz, they'll be here with the latest legal analysis. Now, tonight, many are questioning why this case ever made it into a courtroom at all. Uh, was there overcharging involved? And, of course, the contemptible behavior of the prosecution. We have compelling video evidence showing Kyle Rittenhouse being threatened, being chased, violently assaulted by an angry mob. Look at your screen. One man trying to, right there, stomp on his face and stomp his face into the pavement. Another attempted to grab his firearm, while yet another man, you can see it right there on your screen, uh, literally pointed a loaded handgun at Rittenhouse's face. According to eyewitness accounts and video evidence, all three individuals who were shot were attempting to cause great bodily harm, potentially death, to the then 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse before he discharged his legal weapon, now, which, according to Wisconsin state law, would make this a clear case of self-defense, whereby an individual may use force if he or she, quote, reasonably believes that such force is necessary to prevent imminent death or great bodily harm to himself or herself. Now, the prosecution is obviously desperate. Yesterday, prosecutors were reprimanded over and over again by the presiding judge for impugning Rittenhouse's right to remain silent. Some accused them of intentionally causing a mistrial or trying to in order to get a clean slate and begin a new trial because it's going so badly. Today, the judge continued to admonish prosecutors for their unethical behavior yet again. Take a look. Uh, does Real America's Voice have any sort of um, political uh, bias or agenda or anything like that. I'm, what is the relevance? It goes to the bias of the witness, Your Honor. Uh, the bias in what respect? I, I assume that people. Are, we, uh, as I come at the beginning, this is not a political trial. That's an attorney that you uh, have out of Madison. No objection to relevance. What's the relevance of this? Well, Your Honor, we've had a lot of questions about other What's people. What's the relevance of this? I would like to know why he felt the need to retain an attorney to provide video in this case. I think it goes to bias. I think it goes to credibility. Uh, it's been asked to other witnesses. Let's take the lunch break. Retain an attorney? That's how desperate they are? A guy that was literally a witness that swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God? Now, clearly, this case is not going well for the prosecution. Now reports that Kenosha and perhaps even other cities are bracing for, sadly, another round of violent riots. Well, maybe Liz Cheney and Madam Kinziger and the Democrats, maybe they should form a committee. They should look into the, what, about 534 riots from the summer of 2020, you know, the riots that killed dozens of people, injured thousands of police officers. They were pelted with bricks and rocks and bottles and Molotov cocktails and worse, and also resulted in billions of dollars in stolen businesses. Other businesses burned to the ground. People like Kamala Harris, your vice president, out there promoting bail funds. January 6th, we said it on day one was wrong. It can't happen in this country. People that break the law need to be held accountable. Well, what about the people that were involved in the riots in 2020? By the way, Liz Cheney, where's that committee? Where's your discussion about the Constitution on that issue? Do you believe in equal justice and application of our laws? If you do, it's time for you to speak up. Now, the media mob, by the way, and top Democrats, they all told their mindless followers from the get-go in this case that Kyle Rittenhouse was guilty. As always, they do what they always do. They rush to judgment. They ignore due process, the presumption of innocence. And, of course, they, they create an atmosphere where people expect a certain outcome. That often doesn't happen because their information is wrong, faulty, and political. For example, on the campaign trail, without any evidence whatsoever, Joe Biden accused Kyle Rittenhouse of being a white supremacist. Now, Congresswoman Presley also accused him, quote, of white supremacy. House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries, who frequently speaks out against mass incarceration, he tweeted this week, lock up Kyle Rittenhouse and throw away the key. 
And meanwhile, even basketball star LeBron James posted a video of Kyle Rittenhouse, emotional, crying yesterday in court, tweeting, quote, laughing face emojis with the caption, quote, what tears? I didn't see one. Man, knock it off. That boy ate some lemon heads before walking into court. Really, LeBron? One fake news CNN hack accusing Rittenhouse of fake crying or crocodile tears. And not to be outdone, MSDNC referring to the trial as white privilege on steroids. You can't make this up. Take a look. When Rittenhouse got emotional, it may have come across to the jury as a genuine expression of remorse. Or, on the other hand, maybe it was crocodile tears designed to elicit sympathy. This is white privilege on steroids. Rittenhouse testified that after he shot all of these people, he approached the cops and told them that he'd been involved in a shooting. And the officers told him, be careful so that you don't get pepper sprayed and go home. It's impossible hmm. to imagine that happening to a black or brown person. White privilege on steroids, crocodile tears, lock them up, throw away the key. Um, what happened to due process, presumption of innocence, innocence until being proven guilty? Look at this actual quote from NBC News. If convicted, he'll become a right-wing martyr. If he's freed, it's a message to others like him that prison won't be in their future. Even worse, in a now-deleted tweet, CBS News, that they basically claimed Rittenhouse murdered two men. Uh, that is yet to be determined. That will be up to the jury, and most likely, unless, of course, this case gets thrown out with prejudice. Now, these outlets, these celebrities, these Democrats, they do this time and time again. They should all be ashamed of themselves. They are vilifying an 18-year-old man, declaring he's guilty because of what? Because of their partisan political beliefs? Have any of them ever bothered to watch the tape? Have they bothered to look at any of the evidence in this case? Did they not see the star prosecution witness admit that he pointed a loaded gun at Kyle Rittenhouse before Kyle shot him? On this program, we make it a policy. We never rush to judgment. We believe in due process. We believe in the presumption of innocence. Doesn't matter if you're a liberal, conservative, Democrat, or Republican. We believe in the rule of law in our Constitution. And this is important. We look at the evidence. We make phone calls. We research. We do investigative reporting. We follow the truth wherever it is. That's why, when you look at the track record of this program in particular, I was right about Richard Jewell. Uh, that's why we were right on the Duke lacrosse case. That's wh why we were right on the UVA case. That's right why we were right about Ferguson, Missouri, and Cambridge, and Baltimore, and, and so many other cases. We actually took the time, like in the Duke lacrosse, lacrosse case, I met with the families. In Ferguson, I actually talked to my sources on the ground that told me very early on there were eyewitnesses, many of them, that corroborate the story of Officer Darren Wilson. Anyone in the media care to do that? Any of these Democrats, Hollywood stars, do they ever make phone calls? I doubt it. Democrats, media mob, Hollywood, their own political beliefs and feelings are much more important than what would represent journalism, truth, and justice. For them, the narrative, the politics seems to be the only thing that matters. It's short-sighted. It is dishonest. Frankly, it's immoral. No matter what happens with this case, I cannot give you the outcome at this hour. Kyle Rittenhouse and his family, they deserve better than that from these people with high profiles. They're also creating an atmosphere where people expect a result that probably, if I had to bet, in all likelihood, won't be coming.